morning, beautiful young people. It's a wonderful morning. It's raining outside, so feeling so comfortable and soothing and the rain makes such beautiful sounds that you can even write about. Today is March 31st, 2021. This is the class Word Up, all about poetry, spoken word, and short stories. My name is Kimberly Wright. Thank you for joining. All right, last week we had a lesson about slam poetry. Slam poetry is simply a uh, poetry that someone started back in the 80s. Uh, they decided to bring some uh, artists, poets on stage to recite their pieces and to be judged in front of an audience. So all of those cues are the clues that make slam poetry what it is. An audience, poets, what spoken word uh, persons, and judges. All right. So today we were going to have a slam. I don't know if it's due to the rain that uh, we don't have a lot of people online in the class. Maybe they are under their blankets, snuggling and uh, just keeping warm and relaxing, which is no problem. That's a good thing. So just to start off with, in case anyone, we will uh, have our spoken word at the end of class. And I'm just going to go ahead and share uh, a few things with you. I hope everybody out there is well. and feeling good. Okay. So I think I'm gonna switch my camera around just a bit. Like the old one. <laughs> Please mute yourself. <laughs> oh, good morning, Melody. How you doing? <laughs> Looking so beautiful. You can unmute Miss Betty if you like. Hi, Mel Mel. Good morning. How you doing? Good. You okay? Yes. I like your panda bear. Thank you. <laughs> this okay. Look. Look. Go ahead. Oh, wow, that's so cute. It opens up. I like that. It's a pillow. It turns into a pillow. Oh, wow, that is so unique. So creative. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Betty. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So today I have just a quick poem to share with you. It is a poem uh, that has to deal with March. And it is by Alan S. Trueblood. 
The afternoon is bright with spring in the air, a mild March afternoon with the breath of April stirring. I am alone in the quiet patio looking for some old untried illusion, some shadow on the whiteness of the wall, some memory asleep on the stone rim of the fountain, perhaps in the air, the light swish of some trailing gown. <laughs> I know y'all like probably like, what the world? All right, and here's one more before we have our lesson for today. We're gonna to start off with our lesson, what I want you all to keep continuing to incorporate in your, in your actual works. This next piece is by William Words, Wordsworth, William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud, the floats on higher veils and hills. When all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. All right, so let me get to our lesson. So you would want to get your pen and paper out if you want to possibly take any notes of any uh, thing that you feel might help you or inspire you in your works. All right. Although, you know, if I always give you prompts every week, some people keep up with the prompts and uh, continue to write, but some people may not be inspired by some of the poetry prompts. So that's why I continue to give, give you them every week in case there are new subjects that people need to uh, have to bring their creativity out to, to even write. So I'm trying to encourage you all to write more. If you don't write once a week, then I would encourage you to start writing at least once a week, but you want to start maybe even trying to build it up, writing two times a week or three times a week. Sometimes, you know, you can uh, possibly turn off the television and write so that you can have the, uh, the you can uh, shut down your senses as far as hearing and having to uh, listen to the TV, you know, you don't want any stimulation as it pertains to that so that you can be free to think uh, while you write. So sometimes just give yourself like 30 minutes of writing. You know, it doesn't have to take too long. And you can also time yourselves when uh, you feel like when, even if you go beyond 30 minutes or you, you see that the time has come up, just go ahead and stop it do something else, it might uh, push you to go ahead and go back to your writing another time due to the fact that it didn't take up all your time. All right. So once again, today is March 31st and Hold on, All right, one of the participants calling me to see if we have a class today. I said, all you have to do is log in and get in the class. They like, I thought we was had, anyway, they got confused. They was thinking that today was the class for my class, making something out of nothing. I said that was yesterday. <laughs> all right. 
So today, you know, um, sometimes I always bring up uh, what the events or the holidays for uh, today is. And again, this is the last day of March. So if you have a pencil, you want to write down the four prompts for next week. And this, these, you can just write about these poems in any style that we've already learned about. If you feel like it, and if you want to write something that would be appropriate for the slam, you can, because we will still try to have a slam once we have more people in the class. All right, so March 31st is Bunsen Burner Day. Bunsen Burner Day. I don't know if everybody knows what a Bunsen Burner, but in my mind, a Bunsen burner is the mechanism or the apparatus that we used to use in chemistry that um, used to uh, heat the, uh, the test tubes. Yeah. All right. Also, National Clam on the Half Shell Day. National Clam on the Half Shell Day. I don't know for you people out there that love clams. They didn't say oysters. They said clams. All right. National Crayon Day, National Crayon Day, and World Backup Day. So we'll just check out World Backup Day and see what it's all about. World Backup Day serves as a very important reminder to secure vital files by making a backup copy. Okay. In today's world, nearly everything is on electronic files stored in your cell phone or computer. At the same time, life is so busy and paced that many of us do not take the time to back up our files. Just imagine how you feel if you do not have the precious photos stored in a backup file or in the cloud. If you don't back up those important files and documents on your computer, a system crash can cause you many hours in recreating them. And when it comes to photos, you can just re recreate them. So this special day encourages us to stop and back up all our files. Yes, do it now. It only takes a few minutes. All right, moving right along. So I'm gonna screen share with you all today for our lesson. I would love for you to uh, jot down any any uh, key things that might bring some type of awareness to you or some type of knowledge to you for your, for your, uh, your writing, your future writing. All right, I had to get my notes to see what I'm even looking for. Today, we will be looking at a video uh, entitled, What Makes a Poem a Poem? All right, so let me screen share a few young people and we'll get that started. He's probably going to kick me out when we do the screen sharing. And I'll have to log in on the computer, and my mic doesn't work on that. But I'm going to do the best I can. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. That's okay. It's not your problem. <laughs> yes, ma'am.
I was just actually giving um, a couple of minutes in case Miss Betty needed that to get in. However, I'm going to go ahead and start with the video. It's What Makes a Poem a Poem by Melissa Kovac. Tonight, I'll be eating loaded tops for March Madness. Thanks, boo. I think you got a couple of them tops. No, this me was last year. I didn't get my madness last year, so we're doing double the madness this year. Churchill, 
and surprising places like social media. In 2010, journalist Joanna Smith tweeted updates from the earthquake in Haiti. He was in the room getting dressed when heard my name, Tremor, ran outside through sliding door. All still now, safe, rooster is crowing. Smith uses language in a way that is powerful, direct, and filled with vivid images. Compare her language to a haiku, the ancient Japanese poetic form that emphasizes bursts of brief intensity with just three lines of five, seven, and five syllables. The waters of poetry run wide and deep. Poetry has evolved over time, and perhaps now more than ever, the line between poetry, prose, song, and visual art has blurred. However, one thing has not changed. The word poetry actually began in verb form, coming from the ancient Greek poiesis, which means to create. Poets, like craftsmen, still work with the raw materials of the world to forge understandings and comment on what it is to be human in a way only humans can. Dartmouth researchers tested this idea by asking robots to pen poetry. A panel of judges sorted through stacks of sonnets to see if they could distinguish those made by man and machine. You may be happy to know that while scientists have successfully used artificial intelligence in manufacturing, medicine, and even journalism, poetry is a different story. The robots were caught red-handed 100% of the time. interesting did you like it did you learn something i think it was very visual as it pertains to the artwork it helped tell the story of uh what they were trying to get across what makes a poem a poem so you you saw some of the uh parts of the film or the video that showed some of the things that you've already learned in this class as well I thought that was really neat, and I thought that including uh, a diverse group of people as it pertains to white and black and Asian and everything, that was really neat as well. So, right now, if I do the prompts again before uh, class is over, or next, and Right now, I just want to say, do you all have anything to share as a person to your work? Okay, Ms. Jean. Yeah, I just wanted to share with everybody. Uh, a professor said this to me once. I said, a lot of people say they don't like poetry. And, um, you know, why do we have poetry? He said, well, a collar around the, the, the uh, shirt, uh, a beautiful collar, just a plain collar. It's a collar and it works. But if you add the lace around the collar, that's poetry. And that has always stuck with me. You don't have to have poetry, but it enhances whatever you have in life and makes it more beautiful and memorable. I just remembered that I wanted to share. Yeah, that was so beautiful. That's nice. Nice way to look at it. Thank you, Miss Dean. Thank you. Pretty cool. Uh, yes. Kimberly, um, nature is poetry. When the birds are out there chirping and singing, and you just realize there's sort of like um, music inside you when nature is around. So that's uh, that's poetry. It's poetry. Uh, and music, when people are singing, they say they don't like poetry. But if you listen to the lyrics, it's rhyming, and sometimes the meaning is, is brought out, the little stories. So that's poetry. I like your big window looking at the rain. <laughs> Thank Rainy you. days and Wednesdays. Yes, ma'am. I have a, a haiku poem. I mean, a haiku poem. Okay. Um, I have three that I wrote. I couldn't get into the um, slam right away, so I'm, I'm sort of not rushing into it. I'll ease into it. But, uh, even your even your 
what are you reciting it in your mouth, even the slam? It's slam is about however you want to express yourself on stage. It has no particular way to be per se. It's just about the fact that you have an audience, a a uh, the poets and the judges. You can express yourself in any way you want. So right now it's like being just on a stage for a slam. All right, right now we're gonna have a cool poet that I know. Well, Kim, you didn't let me read my poem. Ever since I was a little girl looking at the fence with my snotty nose. Her name is Vicky B. <laughs> Tell my name in public. Okay. <laughs> Vision of love. It's a haiku poem. And look up, pray again. I see love crying out for no more corona. Missing, the birds are chirping, butterflies are visiting, where are the people? And Corona stopped our jump. One potato jump, two potato jump again, three Corona run. <laughs> okay, <I'm> like <laughs> Not quite slam, but that was pretty Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> you remember one potato, two potato when we were little? Yes. Uh, yeah. One potato jump, two potato jump again. Three corona run. That's yeah. like <laughs> That's good. So do you you said you had two more pieces you wanted to share? Oh I read three. Oh. <laughs> Those are three short poems. Did you yeah. not notice? I had vision of love and then missing and then Corona stopped our jump. Okay. I think I got confused somewhere within the first two pieces that you did. So the first, yeah. Okay. I, I, I read them so the quick so you wouldn't be able to critique it. Count out the syllable. syllable. That's Look what I was up, pray so again. I was counting so fast I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Wilson, Jean, you got something to finish you? I wrote a quickie. It doesn't, I don't know the I don't know the rhyme scheme or the meter or anything, but it's just three lines. Getting old or growing old. You have to choose. Did you hear it? Yes, getting old or growing old. You have to choose. That's it. Okay. That's it. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that. I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like, I feel like there are more choices. What else? Growing young. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, that's hard when everything is sagging. <laughs> okay. Growing young. Really, really Kim, that's a that's a real stretch. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna contemplate that more. Getting old or growing old is your choice. I'm gonna contemplate that more. Cause think about growing. Something's growing. Oh yes, I know. See, so getting old. Some people get old. Some grow old. But the key word to me is old. I think there are more choices. Oh. What are the cho oh? Okay. <laughs> You can either get old or you're gonna go. Either gr e either grow old or go. <laughs> well, we're gonna go anyway. But <laughs> you can get younger too. How can oh, grow old used to mean old? Kim, 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 grow Kim, old Kim, means Kim. better now. And people are old at about ninety-five or a hundred, and they're still not old. Young yeah, human life is not just about the flesh, so. You can, Spiritually. there are so oh, many so. things that can keep you young as it pertains to like laughter and your spirit as far as like your, the way you act, your mentality, thinking the way you think about things. Look at Miss G, Miss G, so I want to hear that. <laughs> and true Kim, I'd rather be this age than 21. I was just starting out. I didn't know anything. I didn't know I didn't know anything. Um... 
Yeah. What, I, what I think I'd rather. You are if you wasn't 21 and learned the things that you learned. That's what made you up to be who you are. Okay, now. I still would rather be this age than 21. I used to hang out with my mother's friends, and they were all my friends. And as they grew older, and even now, they're still my friends. They're still here. Well, I wish I had. I wish I had the mind I have now and the body that I had then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the, good, that's I mean, the, good, the good health and everything is there. You could yeah. run all day long, but now it's something mellow about um, like a fine wine. It's like aging. Really? It's um, yes, a journey. Life is a journey, and it's just a, a wonderful journey if you look at it like that. We yeah. have some rock and rolls, and we yeah, have some, it's a blessing. That's why poetry is so wonderful because it's like it's, you experience things is you're, you're able to translate it into words or... Well, you know, th this reminds me of, you know, when you see somebody in the casket, they say, she sure look natural. That is the most unnatural look in the world. <laughs> well, my mother didn't want an open casket. She said, no. uh, I don't want anybody looking and say, she look good. But I was at the funeral home and I said to myself, she looks good. <laughs> she dead, but... I was standing there, you know, like she was going to speak to me in a minute. She looked good, but my sister closed that casket, had the people close the casket, uh, so we never saw her again except in our mind, and she looked good. Miss Sally Dawson, thank you so much for joining us today <laughs> while you're on your vacation. Where you at? I, I see the oh, 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 behind you. It wasn't a vacation. It was an illness. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You have anything to share today, Miss Sally? Um, well, I did write a, a piece, but uh, I don't have it with me right now to read it. I'll have to read it uh, later. It was, uh, I have to read it to you next week. It's no problem. But, um, you had given us some prompts, and one of the prompts was on things that make you angry. But uh, I'll read it next week to y'all. No, no problem. But I did want to say one thing about the uh, getting old and growing old. I understand what she means because to me, getting old is just sitting still, letting time pass. You don't try to do anything new. You don't try to get out. You don't try to get to know anybody. You just you just exist, okay? That's just getting old. And then growing old is like we are. We're out doing things. We're out meeting people. You know, we, we try new things and getting new classes, you know. And uh, to me, even though you're getting old, you're growing old, and there's only one, you say there's two choices. There's more than two choices. But really, when you think about it, physically, <laughs> you either get old or you die. <laughs> you know, and it's just the way that you get old, to me, I think is what Miss Jean was trying, was conveying, you know, you can either just do nothing and just get old, or you can get up and live and grow old. Yes, ma'am. You got it. You got it. You got it. Because it's inevitable. You're gonna you're gonna have some lines in your face, and your hair's gonna get funny. Arthritis gonna get you. All yeah. that. Offer your boyfriend's rheumatism and all that. <laughs> you don't have to let it stop you, though. And we don't know when to shut up. I don't. <laughs> Like you said, Mama, hush. Hush, we don't want to hear that. Okay. Oh, Are you telling the same story three or four times? <laughs> you told me that already. I, you know, when my kids said, Mama, you told me that already. I said, it bears repeating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, young people. So I'm putting the prompts in the chat as it pertains to giving you some more content to write about. Thank you. Oh, okay. 
if you uh, don't have a clue as to what one of the prompts is about, I'll be glad to uh, share the information with you. Aging, back up your files. Transgendered, taters. Farm workers. Crayons. I think that's going to be a really good subject for me to write a poem about. I'm going to write about a poem about the crayons. Clowns on a half shell. Bunsen burner. Manatees. And the little red wagon. Are there any questions about the prompts as it pertains to, do you need me to, yes, ma'am, Ms. Jean, you have to unmute yourself. What you gonna ask, love? I, I was going to, did I raise my hand? I don't even know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that when I said, you got any questions, you was doing your head like, yes. I was just agreeing with you, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Those are the prompts for next week. If they, if you want to research on them or uh, meditate on them or just, you know, go back over them later to see if that's something you want to write about. Which form do we use, Quinn? Uh, which form do you want to, how do you want us to write about it? Any form? So that's the thing. The reason why I give you prompts is to encourage you to write more. Some people even in the class don't even write at all. Some people have started to write once a week or, you know, I want you to write maybe two or three times a week. Maybe take out time, uh, maybe say I'm gonna write every day for 15 minutes, I don't know. Sometimes when you sit down and write for too long, it becomes overwhelming and maybe you get tired. So I was saying shorten the times that you write, but maybe write more. I continue, to, you know, all the props that I've given you in the past, you have not written about all of those. I want you to write about the ones that inspire you or that, you know, grab your attention. So it's just a, a ploy to get everyone to get into the habit of writing more. And what I was saying was you can use any styles that I've already taught in class, such as the limerick or the acrostic. You can use haiku. You can write about one of these uh, these subjects as it pertains to a short story. You know, you might have a short story to tell about crayons. I got plenty of stories to tell about crayons due to the fact that I've been doing artwork since I was three. And uh... <laughs> we haven't heard that before. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. I was a wet diaper of sad, but she was writing poetry. My goodness. Is that called incremental repetition? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it's probably like a little bit too late right now, but it's okay. Well, sometimes, Kim, I'll take my notebook and look at some of the prompts, and it inspires me. I'm still writing a story. Um, it just takes a little while for me to get it together. Uh-huh. Because I'll stray off my main point, and it'll get so out of control. So I go back and edit. It's one we had early on in the class and I'm still writing. I hadn't forgot about it. I just go back in my notebook and every now and then try to do a little bit. It's just like when you're doing a painting. Sometimes you go back and you don't, you don't rush it and something else comes up or a mood and you go back with the little um, acrylics or oil and you go back and touch it a little bit and there's no time limit on it. So right now I just thought about something really creative uh, I'm going to go ahead and say my prompt first, but I want all uh, the rest of you young people to give me a prompt that I can add to the list for next week. So that's like a really fun thing. First, I'm going to go and my prompt is going to be word mm -hmm. up. So my prompt is word up. Do you have a prompt, Miss? Miss uh, Jean, you want to put in the list for the next week? Um, live your life. Live your life. Yeah, just something that comes off the top of your head. Live your life. How, however, when you read these titles, however it is you want to express whatever that comes to you, that's how, that's how we get the creativity. It might be Sometimes a poem might be a saying uh, crayons, but it might flip and be about something totally different. So it's up to you. Miss Vicki, do you have a prompt? Stuck on your words. So that's, that's pretty creative. Stuck, Stuck on your words. It, it came to me because we're sort of uh, discussing this and that's, I just wrote it down while we were having class. Good job. Miss Sally Dawson, do you have a prompt, something that we can write about? Caring for others. Caring for others? Yes. Okay. That's good. Caring for others. So I hope you've all written all of these down. I'm going to give about a couple more minutes. Right now. Okay. Okay. Kim, which class was it? Was it this class or um, nutrition? Uh, cooking that was that pot liquor was that pot was that here or was that in a in another class in poetry uh, sorry that was in pottery okay that was that's pot liquor and it was p-o-t-l-i-q-u-o-r or p-o-t-l-i-k-k-e-r so yes when you when you look it up it's gonna have different spellings they had the regular spelling like alcohol liquor l-i-q-u-o-r because it's a liquid and they call it a liquor. But however, due to the dialect of people during that time of how they spoke, they had it spelled different ways. When you look up pot liquor, you're gonna see that they have different spellings for it. So one of them was L-I-K-K-E-R. They had another one, like another spelling, L-I-C-K-E-R. So you have to just check it out. I'm going to write these prompts down quickly because I keep a, a log of uh, what the prompts are in case we have to, because that's next week's lesson. So even though I can go back and check, I like to do my work as well, but the spotlight is definitely on you all. 
seniors plans when we have shell. You can also take your camera and just take a picture of those rather than oh, thank you, smarty pants. <laughs> what I always do. I would just, just take my camera. I cheat. <laughs> just call me auntie. You know they call the young people call people auntie if they're doing something that seems like they old and out of date. Yeah. Just take your phone and take a little quick little picture of it, and it has the day, date on it and everything on your details on your phone. I hate I to say we're aging well. I was asking uh, one of my niece's young friends, uh, <laughs> could she braid my hair because it had started growing, and I knew it was really short, but I didn't know if she could grip it, so... I kept calling the girl over and over, and I was like, when can we meet so you can look at it? She was like, Auntie, just send me a picture. We don't have to meet these days. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. I wasn't even thinking. We don't really have to write the prompts down. I do it to make you happy, but normally I just take a picture, and I'm like, let me go back to the 31st and see what those prompts were. No, even even if I say get paper and pen out, if you want to, if it's something I'm putting in chat, that's really uh, that's really genius. That's a good thing. You can take a picture of it as well. I just did that. Thank you, Miss Vicky, for that. And, um, <laughs> I knew you had gotten been hanging around us too long. Yes, you know, yes. young people like to hang around seniors a lot, and sometimes they take on some of the things we do. <laughs> yes, that's a good thing. I. I think the elders, we should learn a lot of things from our elders and a lot of your wisdom and experience that you have already been through. We should listen to you all. <laughs> what, uh, what was you about to say, Miss Jean? I wasn't going to say anything. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being quiet. No. Oh, really now? <laughs> no. And so y'all look so beautifully bright. I love your smile and skin, Miss Vicky, Miss Jean, your voice and your humor and your hair looks so cute. And Miss Sally, you. every time you laugh and giggle, it's look at you. <laughs> it's so warm and you're so cute. Uh, <laughs> we're joining Word Up, the class all about poetry, spoken word and short stories. I'll see you all next week. Have a wonderful and blessed day. You do the same. Thank you. You too.